Remember, one of our favorite key distinguishing features of Border Gateway Protocol is that it does not use a simple metric for best path decisions. There's that whole great complex best path selection algorithm, and there's all these different attributes that we can tweak in order to influence that best path decision. Some of those attributes are so critical that they must be recognized by every BGP vendor. What I mean by that, of course, is network equipment vendors that support BGP. That means well-known. The other thing is they must be present in updates. That's what the mandatory descriptor describes. There's three great examples of this. There's ASPath, there's the origin code, and there's the next hop value. Those must exist in updates and every vendor's implementation must support them. Let's take a deeper look in this nugget. The one that we can accuse of being a little bit goofy is the origin code. Notice I've run a show IP BGP here and here are our origin codes in the legend and we see there's lowercase i for IGP, there's lowercase e for EGP, and then there's the question mark for incomplete. This is a little problematic straight away because look at this, this lowercase i is also used to indicate an internally learned prefix, an internal BGP learned prefix. So wait a minute here, which Cisco hadn't done this, which lowercase i means which? Well, it turns out that the origin codes are right here. They're at the end of this display. So there's our origin code value. This value for an IBGP learn prefix is way up at the front. And you can see both of these prefixes were learned by R4 through IBGP. The other funny thing about the origin code is what do they mean? <laughs> well, I for IGP means it was the network command that got the prefix in there. The question mark or unknown or incomplete means it was redistribution that got the prefix in there. And then the funny one is the lowercase e for EGP. This was the predecessor for BGP that doesn't even exist anymore. So we won't see this one in use. Interesting. So remember, these origin codes could be used to influence pathing decisions because they have different levels of preference. Now, another value that we discussed that is a mandatory well-known attribute is the next hop value. And what's interesting about the next hop is that remember, Border Gateway Protocol is an AS to AS type protocol, not a hop to hop protocol. So when we have a prefix advertised from this AS, let's just say it's AS1, and there's this interface right here for the EBGP peering, when that value gets over to AS2, that value of a next hop by default is going to be retained. So when you look at this router right here, the next hop value is going to be all the way over there. So notice it's AS to AS in paradigm, not hop to hop. This can cause problems sometimes clearly, right? Because this router right here might not know how to reach that next hop way out there. And that's why we have the next hop self manipulation that we can do. We can have this device send those prefixes in and say, look, I'm the next hop. Rewrite that next hop value with my IP address because I'll act as the next hop. And that's a way around that reachability to next hop problem that we could get into. Finally, there's the big one. There's the AS path. I say it's the big one because it's used for so very much. Let's go over to R5 and let's look at some uh, of these prefixes over on the R5 device and we see some nice AS path information. I said it's used for so much. Understand that, you know, one of the things it's used for, of course, is best path determination. A shorter AS path is preferred over a longer AS path. So it's kind of like hop count in RIP. <laughs> All right, let's just forget 
uh, rip for a moment. But anyways, it really is kind of like that, right? Shorter is better here. The other thing that it's used for, though, is loop prevention. So we can't forget that, that AS path is well known and mandatory for a lot of reasons, one of them being it's a loop prevention mechanism. By default, if a router sees its own AS in the path, when that prefix update's coming in, it will know there's potential for loop and it will ignore that information. Now, how does the AS path work? Well, we'll remember it's doing what's called prepending the AS that it gets the update from. So what that means is the path information is added to the front of the path. So when you're looking at an AS path, let's look at this 11, 11, 11 prefix right here. We can see its AS path is right there, right? The source, the origination of that prefix was 65111. And then after being originated there, it passed through 65222. So you have to read this in kind of reverse order, right? Where did it start? The far right of the path, 65111. Then it went through 65222. When my autonomous system here of 65333 sends it on to some other AS, the 65333 is prepended. It's added to the left of that AS path. So three well-known mandatory attributes that we should be familiar with now are the origin code, the AS underscore path, as you sometimes see it written. This is as it would exist in the router code. And then there's next underscore hop as you sometimes see it presented again being consistent with how we find it in cisco router code these attributes tell us so much and are so critical in the operations of bgp i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for viewing